today the focus of this book creator um, uh, session is that um, I am just like wanting to show some great accessibility features which are available and which can be used for remote learning and uh, the collaboration feature which we already have. We pay for Book Creator; it's a premium feature, so we can use that collaborative feature for a lot of things. And and uh, I I'm seeing that Jane has joined. Jane, like you, uh, like I think like it's it's a great tool for like poetry anthologies and stuff like that. So we're going to talk about it. Too little later so just let me start uh, okay. with uh, book creator and um, I'm sure like all of you know what is book creator but uh, the thing is book creator has lots and lots of features which we uh, like usually don't use so I'm just like I'll be focusing on those features <clears throat> okay so uh, today's uh, the agenda for today is like we are going to like use book creator on our devices and we are going to explore some book creative features. Uh, so uh, before we do that, I will invite you to click on the third line says, click on the link to access the book creator demo login. So when you go to uh, this link, uh, you will be taken to a spreadsheet uh, and that spreadsheet looks like this. Uh, and you know what, when you are on this spreadsheet, you can choose to be student one, student two, student three. But if you click on the link, it will take you to Book Creator and you'll automatically join my library. But uh, when you do that, when you click on the link, make sure that you check mark the box there so that the other person is not using the same link as you are using. So there shouldn't be any conflict of uh, links. So click on any link you like, but please put a check mark on the side. So that we know that this link has been taken. Oh, someone has already put check mark. So I already have student one. Okay, great. So uh, this is how we'll move. I'll give you like maybe three minutes for you to do so, so that you all are on uh, the book creator before I start showing you the stuff. And this is uh, the way where, wherein you can also help your students join your book creator, the book, the collaborative book, which you are making for the class, even without a login and a password. So I have just uploaded student one, student two, student three, but you can upload the names of your students and you get a link or a QR code and the kids directly get into book creator even without um, you like asking them, oh, this is your username, this is your password, and we skip all those steps. This, so this is an easy way when we are doing remote learning, when the kids are not with us in the classroom. So we have a, a login credentials for Book Creator. We have an account. Yes, we do have an account. That's a great question, Arun. So if you are interested in using any of this, please let the tech department know. We have uh, we have access to Book Creator and we have the premium account and we can create classes for you. We can share the class with you and you become the owner of the class, the co-owner. And then we can do all this stuff for you. Your kids can be on Book Creator. It's just that you need to let us know if you want uh, this to uh, work for your class. Okay, moving on. I'm moving on from this uh, link here because I'm sure like a lot of people know how to do it and I'm directly coming to my book creator. Okay, so uh, my agenda says that we are going to try out book creator on our devices and we are going to explore the features. So let's go and explore some features. So I'm, I'm already on a book here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and look at how this looks like when you join Book Creator as a teacher. Right now, you're not joined as a teacher. You are just using a demo link. So your, your link will just open up into uh, this shared books. But uh, when you join as a teacher, uh, you have an option to do a lot of things that I'm going to talk uh, to you a little later. So how do you first go and create a book? Uh, so as a teacher, you have to log in with your email ID and password. Once today, you're not going to do that like right now because it will conflict. So maybe after the session, we will have 10 minutes uh, where you will log in as a teacher. So when you log in as a teacher, it allows you to create a library. So now this is a library. So as a teacher, I get to create a library. So I can create a library and I can give a name to my library. 
pre lib or whatever you want to give and there are the options you can allow the kids to google search they can edit their own books they can read each other books so if you are really not wanting them to read each other's books you can turn this option off you can enable collaboration if you're making a if you're making one book for the entire class you have to turn this feature on which is like by default on and then you have to just create a library and when you create a library it opens up like this with no book at all and you can start creating a book here and this is the invite code which we usually give to students when they use their email ids to log in but in remote learning i would highly recommend that you let us know and we send you the links which you have to just like child's name and a link and you have to just send it to the kid and they are in your library already so we 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 use this step when we are at school so how do you do how do you create a book i'm not going to create a book in this uh, because i've already uh, i'm working on the shared library but if you want to see how to do that you have to just click say cl create a new book choose an option or a format for the book um it is recommended that, to use the comic format it you know what the word comic feels that oh my god i don't want to create a comic we just want a poetry book or we just want a science journal but comic book has lots of different features which are not available in a normal book format so it's like 200% recommended that you choose any of uh the comic format so i have chosen a square comic format it opens up a cover for me it's a blank book so i am the master of this book and it's a blank book so what i can do is i can go to the inspector button so these are the three really important buttons in book creator this is an add button this is an inspector button so add button is for adding content and inspector button is for editing the content that you have added and that is for playing your book or reading your book so let's let's create a background for this so i'm going to go to the inspector button and create a background for my book so you can have different backgrounds on different pages or you can copy paste a page and you can have same background so i am going to choose anything so if you are planning to do math you can use graph papers here there are a lot of options if you are looking at writing you can use a ruled paper so the options are numerous Uh, and if you're looking for some beautiful borders there are some amazing borders here these are some comic backgrounds on the top and there are some patterns and textures too so it's totally up to you how you want your book to appear so i'm going to use this background because i i like this background so this is the background and now i can add lots and lots of stuff to it so now as i told you this plus button is for adding content when you look here You, there are three tabs one is a media tab one is a comics tab and one is the shapes tab so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how to create a title so suppose you want to create a title here you can go and you can spread it you can make it big and and you can create a title so you can write go here go to media or take them some text from here and create a title with a caption or use a simple format Oh. Right? This uh, this is too small for a title. So whenever you have to edit, you have to use the inspector. So I'm going to go and use the inspector to actually make my title big that can fit here and I can also change the font. So if you see the inspector, you can change the color. you can change the font so you can change you can use any color i'm just using black but you can use any color you can change the font you can also change the background so you can give it another background if you feel it's too <laughs> it's too bright but yes i'm just showing you right now you can also change the font from here what what suits you best so if you have kids with the reading disabilities here is one of the accessibility features that uh we have this open dyx uh, dyslexic font here so uh, as i told you i'll be all um whenever i'll be doing something i will be talking about the special accessibility features which book creator provides you so this is uh this isn't looking too good so maybe i'll just make my 
uh, small. I can do so much with it. I can remove. Uh, I can remove the background and just say none. So I don't want a background. I just want it a simple PD book. So this is your title. You can also insert pictures. You can you can write the name of the author. You can you can put a picture of your entire class if it's a class project you're doing. You can get a picture and you can put it up here and say, okay, uh, all about myself, all about grade two A, two B, whatever you want to add here. The second thing which I want to show you is how to add media, which is so interesting. So this button here gives you numerous options of adding different media. Let's see what they are. So you can search an image from Google. So if I am wanting to add something for a dog, I love dogs. This, they look some are really cute here. So I'm just going to maybe add this puppy, select it, and add it to my file. Now. This image appears. So one another accessibility feature for this is you go to the inspector and you can actually write an alternate text for for kids who have any sort of problem. Okay, so I'm just going to say this is a right puppy and okay. So whenever anyone is clicking on this picture while reading the book they will listen to what the picture is about so you can add an image so i'm just going to keep my image on, on top i go back and i'll show you what else you can add now this was an image i can also add maps so if you have like students scattered all around the world and they are talking about themselves you can ask them to put uh, where they are so you can go to mumbai maharashtra and you can add it so see Kohinoor, I can see Kohinoor Hospital and like anywhere. So I have to just select the place and it's it's added to my stuff. I can go and edit it here. I can make it small. I can make it big. I can do Mumbai, whatever I feel like doing. And you can then add if you want uh, on this. Uh, if you want to like show your friends where you are, you can add an arrow and just tell them, oh, I'm in Mumbai right now. Something of this sort you can also do when you're like doing a class project. Another thing is you can upload files from your computer. So you can upload any PDF. So if I have a PDF here, I am just going to look at one of the PDFs here. So, uh, okay, this is my PDF file. I'll just open and I can upload the PDF. So it's showing one file is uploading and my PDF gets uploaded here. Your kids will have to just open up the PDF and they can read if you want to share something with them. So my entire PDF gets uploaded here. I'm sure like none of us has already used the, this PDF feature earlier. And then another thing, you can also add files from your Google Drive. So it, it gets connected to your Google Drive. And then suppose if I want to uh, add the presentation, what I'm doing right now, we'll create a PD. Or if you want to share something with your students, I can just search my files. So this is my entire presentation and it's and it gets uploaded here. So we saw that we can you can give it a title and you can add it to the book. So you can have your presentation, you can have a PDF document, you can have maps, you can have arrows and shapes and you can also have uh, a picture that you search from Google. Now, this is the most interesting feature, the embed feature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on a virtual tour uh, site where you, from where you can get virtual tours, and I'm going to embed that in my... Uh, so if, you are, if your students are working on any art project or if your students are like somewhere uh, and they want to share where they are or you want to share with them uh, something interesting about the place you are in, or any virtual museum, we'll see how we can do that. So we're going to use this embed feature and I'm going to come to it a little later. So right now I'm showing you a website that's called Poly 
when I click on this website, it gives me explore the world of 3D. I can go on Poly and I can actually look for tours. So if, if I'm looking for a tour, OK, tour of Dubai, uh, architecture. OK, so this is some beautiful Jerusalem, Maldives. These are some beautiful tours here. So I might just choose one of them here. Um, and then let me see which one is nice. All of them look so beautiful. Right now, when you're sitting at home, everything looks so pretty. Uh, so I'm just going to maybe go to uh, Taj Mahal. And then I click on Share. So my tour is ready here. It's showing me. So there are different scenes in the tour. I can go to Share. And then I can go to Embed. So I get this embed code, and that is what I'm going to use when I go to my edit button here. So when I go to add, I can actually embed virtual tours. So you can have your own book with different virtual tours. You can give the kids a choice of virtual tours. I have to just put the embed code here and say confirm link. So it's validating Doom architecture around the world. It's not only. Um, Taj Mahal, but it's doom, art, uh, doom architecture around the world, and I can add it to my book. So now see, this is added to my book. I'm just going to delete all of them so that I can show you. See how easy it is to delete stuff. So I can go here, and I can make my tour big. And when my kids click on this book, they actually can see that entire tour which I have embedded for them. So this is the great Asachi Stupa. They have to just turn around. They can also look at some pictures here because it's linked to pictures. There are hotspots in this tour. They can look at all these different things. And they can also go to different scenes from here. So this I is for information. You, you can put that on the book creator, click on I, click on the picture, and this is how you can like show them uh, virtual tours or embed virtual tours in the book creator itself. Or the kids can also do it if we teach them, but right now I, I am not sure like how well they'll be able to do this. So now I go to my next page. When I just click plus, it connects me to another page. Another way of looking at pages is go to this view. Uh, let me go back again. I was too quick, quick. Click on the grid view, and you'll be able to see the cover page, the second page, and the third page. So it's very easy. When the child is working on one page, you'll see how uh, they all can just take one page and work on it. Another feature of we have finished import. Another feature which is really interesting is that you can take a photo in Book Creator, and you can also record a video. So I'm going to record a video here. Hello, friends. It's really nice that you all could join me for this Book Creator PD. I'm super excited to so, show the transcript feature of uh, the video recording. OK, so this is my video ready. I use this video. It's here in my Book Creator. I don't have to uh, do anything. But as I told you, this inspector feature is really important. I'll have to just choose what I want to change. And then I can add captions here. So it will generate auto captions for me. This is another accessibility feature. So sometimes when the kids are not able to understand what you're saying, at the same time, they have the option to read the captions. So this takes a little while because it's creating, uh, it's auto generating the captions from my uh, words, what I just spoke. And all the words are going to appear here. I will go back and we'll come back to it. So this is how you can uh, record an audio, uh, a video and an audio. And you can also take a picture. It's very simple. Click on take a picture and just take a picture of yours. So it's good. So if the kids are reading their poetry, they can read the direct, uh, they can read the poetry directly from here. They can have a picture of their poem. They can have a picture of something which is representing their poetry, they can do so many things. I'm just using that uh, 
poetry example, but you can use it with so many different things. So you know what? Uh, I'm just thinking right now that let's do some hands-on activity, a lot of talking. You can explore the tools because these were really important tools. And let me just like just quickly, quickly show you this last thing before I ask you to go and do something. So when you are saying uh, you can draw, and this auto draw feature is a really great feature. So suppose if I'm wanting to draw something uh, here, it automatically understands that Miss Silky's drawing is really not great. So what am I trying to draw? Oh, maybe I'm trying to draw a house, or maybe this house, or maybe that house, or maybe this thing. So it automatically converts your drawing. This is artificial intelligence. This is auto draw feature by Google, which has been embedded in um, uh, Book Creator. So this is really cool. I can go here. I can also change the color. I can do so many things with this. Kids really love this auto draw feature. And then I can also fill in color. So this fill bucket allows me to fill color. So I might just want to fill color here. I have to just go and fill color. So this is how I can fill color. I, I just pressed it too hard. This is the eraser. This is the paint brush. And um, you could just go and explore. I'm sure like we all uh, would love to do this. Now, coming on to like uh, you working on your own. So what I'm going to do right now is I am going to um, invite you to go back to the link which you had opened. I am going to go to my book, which I'm collaborating with you. So I'm going to show you the book which I'm collaborating with you. And we all are working together on this book. So when, uh, when you click on this book, you will get an option. You actually collaborate on this book. So all of you, Arun, Delisha, Jane, whoever, Neelu, whoever is there in this uh, group, can actually take one page and your maybe maybe some kind of like a task or an activity can be like you visualize where you want to be right now so where you want to be right now you can use the colors you can use the visuals and if you want you can also add your voice to it because if you look here there is an option for adding your voice to it so you can go ahead and just play around with book creator and as in how you put in stuff here, because this is a collaborative book, everyone uh, in this library or in this book will be able to see what you're doing. So feel free, go ahead and just explore. And I'm here to answer your questions because um, I can help you with like, if you need something. Are we all ready for exploring? Can we check how that caption thing went? See, my captions are here. So hello, friends. It's nice that all of you could join me. And you know what you can do is you can also make the captions up and down if you want the kids to read. See here, all my captions are here. And same thing happens when you record an audio. So if you are recording an audio for your kids, at the same time, if you're recording some instructions, at the same time, they, if your instructions are clear, step one, it's going to appear here, step two, step three. So they have your video audio video or audio and they also have the written text and you don't have to sit and write it again it automatically picks up uh, the caption and the transcript okay let me go back to my book i'm excited to see what everyone is doing right now oh wow i have someone who's in a relaxed mode and see at the same time i can add a speech bubble here so as a teacher you can also add a sticker here saying, great work. So you can add a uh, text here. I'm just going to add text to my speech bubble. If you want. Otherwise, you can just uh, have a simple uh, feature where you can just add. So I can make it a little big, get my text inside. And, and you know what? I will have to drag it outside because I don't want 
So now, this is how you can comment on it. You can add, you can add a shape. You can add anything if you want to comment on the kid's work. So I can also go here and see uh, if if there are friends who are working on different pages. So this allows you. This might not be a real time, but oh wow! So we have someone on page three, page four, and you can actually click on the page and see. uh if your kids are collaborating at the same time so if you really want to use this with your classroom do let me know like and we can create something for you or you can use it any time like not for this year you can use for next year it's it's totally like the school has this